You're listening to the Sketchnote Army Podcast. I'm your host, Mike Rohde, the author of the Sketchnote Handbook and the Sketchnote Workbook. And this is the podcast where I chat with sketchnoters and visual thinkers and try to understand what makes them tick. This episode of the Sketchnote Army Podcast is brought to you by Paperlike, a screen protector for the iPad that makes drawing with the Apple Pencil feel like paper. Paperlike's Nano Dot technology offers the paper-like friction you want with the clearer screen visibility you need. This new surface even improves drawing precision and reduces arm fatigue. If you're frustrated with the slippery, shiny glass of your iPad screen, try Paperlike. The Paperlike feel on my iPad Pro screen was a game changer. I won't use my iPad Pro without one. It's the closest you'll get to paper on a digital screen. Buy yours today at paperlike.com slash sketchnotearmy. And now on with the show. In this episode, I talk with Raffaellino Rossetti and Carl Domke about their excellent work on LearnOS to teach sketchnoting. LearnOS is an open source platform for learning that relies on circles of learners to accelerate learning and provide both accountability and encouragement along the way. You're going to love this episode. Hey everyone, welcome. This is Mike Rohde, and I'm here with two really interesting people to talk to us today about LearnOS. And you might wonder, what is this LearnOS thing? And we'll definitely address that right away. I have uh, Raffaellina Rossetti and Carl Domke here with me. Hello, guys. Hello. Hi, Mike. Nice to be here. Great to be here, Mike. It's really good to have you. So before we begin anything, before we talk about your stories and those kind of things, Carl, t- tell us what is this LearnOS thing? Like, it sounds unusual. It sounds like an operating system or something. Tell me what this is. So Leno Sketchnoting is an open source toolbox for improving your sketchnoting skills. So it's basically a program uh, which takes you through a 12 week long sprint. It has a lot of exercises and it's made for up to five people, a circle, you might call it. Yeah? Uh, you meet once a week and you have things to prepare and you meet for an hour and share what you did. Yeah. So it's maybe uh, first week lettering, look on your letters, try to write in a perfect way or, or just letter your favorite saying. Yeah, You bring it into the circle, you take a look at it, yeah? you admire the other's work, you give uh, a feedback, uh, you grow. Yeah, um, And uh, the nice thing about it is it's not starting on a particular point, but it's getting everybody on every level. Mm. Yeah? So. I think people like it because it gives you the possibility to uh, talk about sketch noting in a depth that's not possible with your colleagues, uh, your family, because uh, really improving your sketch noting skills is a is a hard thing, yeah. Because n- not everyone is doing it. Yeah, they uh, look at your sketch and say, "Ah, oh, that looks nice," or "I don't get it." Yeah, but to get really good feedback is is hard. So this is what uh, sketch noting um, uh, circles, Lanois circles, do. Yeah. And the best thing, I haven't mentioned that, is it's free. It's an open source thing. Um, it's licensed uh, in Creative Commons BY, and you can use it for commercial use, private use, do your own thing with it. Mm. Yeah. It's free in the internet, yeah. and it's there in English since last week. Yes, that's exciting. And um, it began in German. I know that. Right. And uh, I, th- I love the fact that it's accessible and that it's it's got a component of, of um, accountability. I think that's often a big piece that's missing in online training is the lack of accountability. It's too easy to start something and then just not do it. Right. So having the accountability is really huge. So that's sort of sets the discussion. We're going to talk about LearnOS for sketchnoting, both uh, German, which is came first and now the English edition that we definitely want you to check out. So we'll have links to that so you can find it. Um, now, as we get talking, I'd like to introduce in more detail who we're talking with. So first, let's talk with the lovely Raffaellina Rossetti. Say hello and let us know who you are and what you do. Hello. Like you said, my name is Raffaellina Rossetti, and I'm a visual thinker. I think I'm born like this. It was always my passion. And meanwhile, I'm also a digital scribe. So I learned about... 2013 about uh, sketch noting, and it led me directly to to you, Mike, and I got your book, and uh, it complemented 
fantastically what I'm already doing. I'm coming from the psychological field. Mm. And uh, when I'm trying to uh, work on concepts, I always use kind of sketch noting. I didn't know it is sketch noting. And I, I considered myself not an artist, so I couldn't draw. So I used just boxes and, mm -hmm. and, and words. And um, this was really handy to see, wow, that's so easy. I can try this too. So that, that's where my journey started. Meanwhile, I was working in the educational field, like giving lessons in mathematics and Latin. And I built in this visual skills more and more with my students. Hmm. Then I joined the Sketchnote community. And it, it's like I found my artist in me. <laughs> I Good. switched to, to digital tools, which I prefer meanwhile, because you can easily take it everywhere. Mm -hmm. I see still the, the really craft with a pen on paper. It's still something very amazing, but uh, I just picked the dis digital, digital ream mm. because it's, um, it's handy, especially now in this COVID times, mm -hmm. it's just like the, the favorite tool. Mm. And um, I, I took it now into my professional life It's like my, my foundation, which uh, is building everything what I'm doing. And I'm working on a big project with all my skills, including the scribing, the sketch noting, the visual thinking and the psychology. Wow, that's got to be satisfying when you can take all parts of yourself and use them on a project like that just feels so good, doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And the collaboration part is even the fun part, which led mm -hmm. me to Lernos, because that's also based on a collaborative mm -hmm. endeavor and that's that's making it even more amazing and i think that's the skill for the 21st century to mm -hmm. collaborate together to learn together and in these circles it's kind of a practice field to also engage in how to learn together how to create something together mm -hmm. how to um, contribute to to whatever field you're working in mm. Wow, that's really great. Thank you for giving us a, a background on where you're coming from. Now, Carl, tell us a little bit about you. How did you, what do you do and how did you get where you are now? I was just nodding for the last two minutes <laughs> because I'm an educator. Um, I'm based in Kiel, Germany right now. Um, and I work in adult education for the last 10 years and um, originally started as a German teacher and went into organizing language classes um, right now. Uh, I'm working in technology and um, everything it does with our educational system. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, very interesting in this COVID times. <laughs> A lot of work to do right now. Yeah. We're basically helping adult education centers here uh, in the north of Germany to cope with all that stress mm. and uh, all that uh, chaos that's coming with it yeah, because um, our schools um, f schools for adults that uh, that we're here um, are working for been around for a hundred years right now mm -hmm. uh, and they always work that way that people just came to their schools yeah, and uh, worked on their stuff there yeah and right now it's not it wasn't possible for uh, for the time of the lockdown right now we're coming back yeah but a lot of, a lot of it changed and a lot of uh, our lessons moved into the digi digital part and that's what I'm doing right now mm -hmm. in my job mm -hmm. yeah, just to help those adult education centers to get all their uh, things up Uh, running digitally um, but let us do the, uh, the the origin story of me as a sketch noter um, I was I think never that uh, good in school or that mm. Um, mm. I think I think yeah yeah, yeah a I lot of a lot of missed a lot of missed opportunity there I always hope I uh, um, yeah I learned about sketch noting like Uh, 15 years mm -hmm. uh, prior <laughs> prior to uh, to me um, that would have uh, helped a lot mm. uh, so I was always scribbling I did a lot of graffiti mm -hmm. I did a lot of lettering and this um, moved on and on and on I did a lot of character work and uh, I guess in 2014 I was 
struggling in my job to keep all that in my brain <laughs> so it w w wasn't wasn't possible for me um just to um and yeah i moved to sketch noting mm. just to keep it in my head mm. report at work what i did yeah and it really helped me a lot mm. Mm. well it's really interesting that you're both sort of from an education perspective and bringing that so it i, I can definitely see an education streak running through learn os in a, in a great way, right? So thank you guys for coming on the show. Uh, let's talk a little bit about LearnOS for sketchnoting. First, talk about the LearnOS platform, because I, as I understand, this is a broader platform that can teach anything you want to teach with it, right, using that structure. Uh, how did you discover this platform? And then what led you to the idea like, hey, we should do sketchnoting on this platform? That would be really interesting to understand. It was just a random tweet in 2018. Mm. And I was thinking for some time about uh, joining a working out loud circle mm -hmm. um, and had no idea where to start and what to do. So I stumbled upon uh, Lernos um, and the guy who invented it, uh, Simon Dückert from Nuremberg, Germany, uh, just posted, okay, um, I'll be in a, a Lernos webinar tomorrow <laughs> and I will uh, show this canvas to you to organize your lifelong learning. And uh, I have da 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 uh, to tell you. And I was, okay, <laughs> so it's tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> uh, why, why, don't show, why don't show up there? It's just a <laughs> webinar. Yeah. Um, so I gave it a try and it sounded great because I love open source mm -hmm. um, and I loved what uh, Simon was doing there. Loved the, uh, all the tiny details he put into it so far. And I decided to start a circle mm. because Lernos in, in the core part is taking uh, working out loud, uh, getting things done and objectives and key results mm. as three learning journeys mm -hmm. you, can, you can do in a sprint. And uh, all three are very exciting topics for me. Mm -hmm. yeah? um, and we decided to, uh, st or I decided to uh, start a working out loud circle yeah? in the Lernos way, yeah? working with the, the Lernos guide um, and was wondering, okay, but with whom? Yeah, not my colleagues. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I don't want to talk about work. Yeah, I want to <laughs> talk about something that's interesting, that resonates with me, that's important for me, yeah, but has nothing to do with work. Yeah? And this is why I decided uh, to pick sketchnoting mm. as a topic. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I had a great time looking in on all those uh, answers on Twitter. Uh, and I maybe found like 20 people mm -hmm. who were interested in joining mm -hmm. a circle, maybe 10 that said, okay, I'll be there at the first meeting. Uh, and we started with five to six people and Rafaelina was one of mm. them. And this was yeah. an amazing start. <laughs> wow. So that's all very coincidentally. Yeah, because I just accidentally saw the tweet and thought, hmm, he's looking for some people f to join him collaboratively on this journey. And I thought, well, I love collaboration. I love sketchnoting. I just started my company, Denkflow. So that's a nice opportunity to learn more and to deepen it. And so we got together. So you didn't know each other before this moment then? We saw each other on the um, International Sketchnote Camp in Hamburg, 2017. Okay. But yeah. you know, it was very crowded there. We met yeah. each other there too, yeah. And we maybe talked for a minute. You just, yeah, yeah you just knew my name. Yeah, and it was like, <laughs> yeah. okay. But that was enough, right? Just that, so that uh, that's interesting. I know the Fab Four, uh, the women who made that event happen, will love, will love to hear that this LearnOS thing came from that movement that they started there, right? Deciding to do something in person. So here's another benefit they could probably have never imagined right they couldn't if you asked if you told them this would happen they would no way that's that couldn't happen and here it is so that's pretty exciting so that's interesting that you started it with sketch notings because you wanted to get away from work things and other things and i and i would guess i'm going to make a guess here carl that because you're in learning and education it was a way to do learning that could apply to your work without having to do work stuff, right? So like the benefits for both of you really, because you're both in education would be, well, this is a really interesting way to approach things. It's touching on these three areas you mentioned that are really fascinating to you and you get to live it 
which often is the best learning, right? Is living an experience because you, you internalize it and it means something more and that you chose sketch noting. So, and I think the numbers sound about right. Like, you know, you, so many people say they want it and then 10 actually show up and then five actually do it. That's pretty, that's pretty normal, right? So tell me a little bit about this first circle and what, talk about what happened during it. And then at the end of it, like something must have said, we have to keep going. Talk about that story. It sounds like Rafaelina, you've got that one. Yeah, I mean, it was interesting because it was very international. The first circle was in English, actually. Mm. Yeah, because we had even very hard. <laughs> Ras- Rasagi from India with us, who mm-hmm. meanwhile has a real nice career using sketch noting and yep. graphic recording. Mm-hmm. And uh, we we tried from the beginning to tweak the learners uh, according to our our needs. Yeah, to make it more visual. Yeah, mm. as a sketch noting program, it didn't fit all our needs, and and we were mm-hmm. really free in kind of we we tweak it the way we need it. It's just a guide, so we can mm-hmm. just lean on it, but we don't have to follow it through. We are not, we mm-hmm. don't have to be obedient. And out of this, I think, came even the idea: what what is if we make our own guide for the ending? Then the, the idea came because now we had already practiced. How can mm-hmm. we take this guide? And use it for sketch noting. And meanwhile, sketch noting, you're right here in Germany, it's a very big movement mm-hmm. going into v- different directions, into different fields. You have in in law, people from coming from law, from education, from from you can't even imagine where they're coming from using using sketch noting, which is fantastic because it's a universal tool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We we should use it this way. It's a visual thinking tool. And, um, yeah, and it was great because we really managed it very relaxed, but we went through the circle five stayed with us the whole time. And, and since we saw who's accountable and who's, who's reliable, we thought, Hmm, this might be a a nice foundation for, for the next collaboration. Mm. And there was maybe like a three months break after we did the first circle. Mm -hmm. And I guess we had this idea that we wanted to tweak it and make it a really um, sketch noting guide that mm-hmm. is uh, write our own exercises mm-hmm. and make it a thing that's uh, focusing for 12 weeks on sketch noting and uh, visual thinking. But you know how things are. Yeah? You have this idea and uh, you put it somewhere and you wait for a little while. You wait a bit longer. Mm-hmm. And I guess somewhere in March of 2019, I was like, okay, if we don't do it now, yeah, it, uh, if I don't call the guys uh, and we get started, this will never happen. Mm-hmm. Yeah? Mm-hmm. So um, we had this Telegram group and I wrote everyone okay guys i i got started i have some ideas uh let's meet next week uh, and think about how we can get this done yeah? and let's do a shout out uh, to benny and to lars right now uh who are part of the original circle and i guess uh really really important to get uh to get this on because uh, they're both better far better than us in the technical <laughs> aspects of it yeah and we were like okay um let's think about it and what can we do and uh, um, yes uh, teachers and educators and they were like okay um i looked at github uh, Simon is doing it this way um, and I just wrote a bit of code and we can do it easily. <laughs> yeah. um, and we were like, okay, hey guys, <laughs> if that's not a problem, yeah, let's talk about the exercises. It's always good to have yeah. a team, right? A team of people who have different different perspectives that can come together, especially if you have a good mix of team, then there's almost nothing you can't do, right? So it sounds like that was the case with these these guys. Absolutely. And we, we organized via Trello and everybody just grabbed their duties. It mm. was like naturally growing without any kind of uh, leading parts. It was like just like we have this task to, to fulfill. Who's mm-hmm. going to do what? And everybody grabbed something. Yeah. And the stars aligned and uh, we got another member on board uh, and got uh, Mayuka. With, mm-hmm. uh, who mm-hmm. is organizing a Sketchnote Barcamp in Hanover. Mm-hmm. Um, and I talked about Lernos with her before, and she did a Lernos circle on her own mm. 
Yeah, uh, and afterwards came back to me and said, "Okay, I'll be with you uh, when you start doing the sketch noting guide." Mm. Yeah, uh, and we were like, "Okay, <laughs> my okay? Great. Yeah, we take you all <laughs> for on. that. Yeah, <laughs> just come on. Yeah, it will be uh, not much work. Yeah, May maybe <laughs> six to eight weeks. Yeah, we easily crowdsource it. Yeah, just ask people on the internet to share their stuff with us. Yeah, compile it. Yeah, it." will be easy in no time maybe a, 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 an hour a week and we, we we will be finished with everything it's almost an hour a week it depends how you look at an hour <laughs> and and, and Carl, Carl is a master about timing <laughs> let's say a, a, an hour meeting okay after 90 minutes maybe it's enough now no but no, but we, no, no. we, we, we took we it we have to do it we have to do it right now yeah yeah We we won't we won't be finished. So um, we, what we what we did and we successfully managed it in 2019 uh, to be ready with the first German version of the sketch noting guide mm -hmm. for both the Lernos camp and the sketch noting bar camp mm. in Hanover, mm. and uh, that's uh, something that was really important for us uh, to have it accessible for both communities. Mm -hmm. uh, the Lernos community is much more bay. Yeah, much more the educators, the people working in big corporations mm. uh, um, and accessing it as one tool in their toolbox that they can use in training, that they can use for their purposes in education and their work. Um, but we wanted to address the sketchnoting community too. Yeah? So um, we worked hard for like two or three months and we had... Um, I guess over 20 people um, collaborating with us uh, and we did a Google form and mm. talked to people and they could uh, just give us ideas for exercises. Mm -hmm. yeah? um, and we just, just put them together in one order and it took forever. <laughs> yeah, just to <laughs> but, but we are so passion driven. Doesn't matter. We did it. We did it, and wow. it was finished in May. We 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 saw each other in in Munich back then, mm -hmm. and and met for the for the learners camp, and it was fantastic. Mm. That's mm. really the the nice part is. Meanwhile, we learned a lot about how to collaborate even digitally, mm. um, non place based, and and it's it's we learned a lot in this time, not just sketch noting, which helps you in everyday life because we continue to be in a remote situation. But I think, yeah. you know, the long-term benefits are you can start working with people all over the world. And so I, many years ago, I worked with uh, Europeans. So I worked remotely from Milwaukee with uh, Europeans, mainly in Germany and Holland. And I, uh, it was, it didn't take me very long to see the benefit of this. Like there were definitely disadvantages, right? Because time zones, right? For you guys, when we talk now, it's evening, but for me, it's midday. But there are advantages, right? Because the guys in Europe could have something and leave something for me at the end of the day. And I could work, you know, another five hours after they left or something and have something ready for them in the morning. So you almost have this cyclical handoff thing, right? So you probably encountered a little bit of that. I think that's maybe a learning. I think the other thing that I see around the timing. I think you really identified timing was really key for those two, like the camp for Learn OS camp and bar camp, because these tools will not work if people don't use them, right? You can spend all you want to build it, but if no one uses it, it's, you know, if a tree falls in the forest kind of thing, right? So mm -hmm. having that timing where it was ready and exciting for Learn OS camp users to try and for sketchnoters to try probably was a lot of energy and a spike of attention that sort of was the engine to, to move it forward, I would think. Is that, would that be a good guess? Yeah. Definitely. Hmm. And I was totally disappointed, Mike, when nobody started a circle in June, in July. Yeah? I was scrolling through Twitter and I was like, hmm. okay, I just wasted a year of my life. Yeah? And it was sh just such a stupid idea. Yeah? <laughs> so why did I do this? Nobody wants this guide. Yeah? <laughs> um, and yeah, I confess that to you right now. Yeah, Rafaelina never talked about it. Yeah? But I was really struck. I was, hmm. uh, That's tough. so yeah, it's, it's really tough because we did everything for the timing. 
Yeah, um, but people need their time. Yeah, they need mm -hmm. to form their circles. Mm -hmm. They need to think about it, find the right time for for them for the circle. And I guess when the first circle started in maybe September, um, August September of 2019, and one of my favorite German sketch noters, uh, Andrea Wendt, uh, mm -hmm. was was on it. Yeah, um, I w I was like, okay, <laughs> yeah. even if even if it's just that one circle and if she just continues this for the 12 weeks and keeps on posting this great stuff that she's doing in the circle it be worth my while mm. yeah? yeah and this was so regarding so such a great experience mm. it's it's almost as if what you guys did uh, for the sketch learning community, it sounds like I, you didn't talk about LearnOS community, is you almost planted a seed, right? Like the seed needs time to germinate. It needs time to have enough water. The timing, often timing is so much everything, right? Like yeah. either whether intentional or accidental, timing is huge. So it had to sort of germinate for a while and then suddenly boom. So so this happened with, uh, you know, Anne went. Um, what happened after that? Did, did that? Was that the spark that sort of lit the fire or... I mean, we got then some some feedback, and what what we realized it it's like a doubt is coming up, and I guess mm -hmm. that's normal. You you made a product, you put it in the world, mm -hmm. and now you're waiting, and you're waiting every second, <laughs> and and you just have to be patient and wait. Mm -hmm. And and now it it's like we we started to get um, in contact with circles, not just one circle. It got more and more in wider circles, building mm. up circles, and we got feedback. And out of this feedback, we decided we have to uh, rearrange this uh, sketch note guide one more mm. time, take implement the feedback we got, and we, we came together for, for another circle to implement all this, which mm. also just next to whatever we did, we, we did it uh, in no time, like the hour time. <laughs> it, it's the, one hour. The, 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 the time, uh, time measurement of Carl. Mm -hmm. One hour is, we, you know, time is non-linear. We don't care so much. <laughs> but it was very, very enforcing and, and encouraging to, to see how many people really got into it. Mm. And, and since we started our guide in, in English, finally, our first circle, for me, the whole time, since I'm also very connected to the English-speaking um, world, mm -hmm. I had on my mind, it, but it has to be in English. I was, I was continuously saying, but we have to have it in English too. Yeah, later, later, but we have to have it. Yeah, Nobody really wanted to listen to me so much. But finally, we got to this part because I think it's such an amazing tool. It would be a pity if it's not made available for mm -hmm. more people. And, and then we again... Oh, Carl wants to say something, so? Yeah, I want to take one step back <laughs> okay. uh, and, and do a shout out to Katrin and uh, Katarina, who we got on board uh, to do the revision uh, mm. of the guide and do version 1.0. Um, and this was in March 2019, just before COVID hit us. Mm. Yeah? Um, and it was like, uh, okay, this is just one year past. Uh, we got all this feedback and let's talk to people uh, who did the circle and uh, get more feedback. And we mm -hmm. talked to uh, Katrin Mentele mm -hmm. and Katarina Bloom, two great sketch notes. Mm -hmm. um, and they were willing to not only share their feedback with us, uh, but to work on the guide, yeah, just mm -hmm. to improve it. Uh, and, and we had Andrea Wendt uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, too, yeah, Jeff. and uh, she did a lot of stuff, but wasn't able to continue on mm. with the writing pro uh, process more. Mm -hmm. So we had a group of seven people now um, in the author team. Big shout out to the author team. Mm. Yeah. Um, and we were able to publish the German version uh, 1.0 in June. Once again, ready for Lernos Camp mm. and Scotch Noting Camp. Mm -hmm. And... I was like, okay, Rafaelita, now we can talk about the English version. <laughs> I think you know. That's right. Now, now we have a website. Yeah? <laughs> and this was okay. I I have to be honest to you. It was more important for me to get the website running for the mm. German version and get Benny uh, on this whole aspect of uh, moving it from a PDF and Word mm. and EPUB mm -hmm. uh, format that we had back in two thousand nineteen. Um, and move it to a 
a website mm -hmm. and make it really accessible yeah. for people yeah, and make it more easy to find. Mm -hmm. uh, and we had this for the German version and uh, Rafalina took all the work yeah, um, <laughs> for the English one. Mm -hmm and made it made it happen um, well I, I took the lead after i first let uh, carl lead the german mm. version with the website and everything i took the lead on the english version mm -hmm. and i contacted um, um sketchnote army at the slack channel mm -hmm. and and we collaborated even the translation so even there i had to shout out to like for instance chris chris nussel was mm -hmm. one mm -hmm. who who really helped a lot and 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 checked our translation does it really sound like a native Natural, speaking yeah. would would understand it mm -hmm. so we got a lot of help also from the community we had a google doc and set up everything and then benny again big shout out to him he really did all the transfer into the technical parts to mm. to make it ready for the website mm. Well, and I think, you know, there's something smart about the way you approached it, even though I think there was, it was, it was both good that Carl focused on the German version first, because that is your, that's the part, you know, like, you know, that language, you know, that community, you know, there's a demand for it and you can sort of solve the most of the problems in a thing that you're most comfortable in. And then once you sort of feel like it's settled, you've got the website, you've got the structure, you've got people that have used it and given you feedback, you know, you're at 1.0, right? So it's actually gone through some iteration that's a really good time then to do the language translation, which, you know, then now you can do once it's in English and German. Now you can start doing like you want a French version or Vietnamese or Ukrainian or whatever, right? Like now you sort of have some momentum, but I think it's it was probably really wise to sort of settle it in a comfortable language so that you knew you really had it tight right before you step to the next one. But I'm excited that it's yeah. in English. Because you can never underestimate how difficult it is to pitch something if you don't have anything to show mm -hmm. uh, and pitch it in a foreign language. Yes. Yeah. And this is why uh, I came back to, okay, let's do German first. Yeah. After our initial circle, which was in English, maybe we could have done it in English uh, for the first one and do it internationally first. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I don't think it would worked, would have worked. Yeah. No, it, it was fantastic this way. It was absolutely, and and we kind of did some ping pong work here, mm. and I was mm. patient. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I was nice to Carl. Got you there. I I just persisted, not to forget it. <laughs> Eventually, your dream came true. So you know. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's fantastic. That's the good thing about a team, right? You know, you each have a little different vision and you have, if you trust each other, you can defer your, your decision or your desire knowing that, okay, it's going to be a better product that we can translate. It's going to make my life easier. Right. So that's, that was, it's good that it worked out the way it did. And we launched uh, learnersketchnoting.org, the international version uh, last week. Yeah. And that there was an, there was an event that happened, um, a uh, zoom call and, uh, several people were involved in that and it's an exciting moment and now of course we're having this discussion this is going to be in uh in uh, the the sketch and army podcast so people will get to hear more about the backstory and what it's about and like you may see learn os popping up and this will give you some insight that was really the thought here was to give some description and some definition to help you understand and they like, oh that sounds really interesting i need to try that right so that's our hope in uh, sharing this LearnOS sketchnoting journey and sort of description and definition. And I'm, there's probably many Germans that have been through this, these circles that are nodding their heads like, yes, you have to do it. And I think the other thing that I, know, that I wonder too is I know word of mouth is very powerful. And I think what you also maybe observed was you produced the thing and then it just sat there and it had to germinate. But I think once, you know, uh, Andrea did it first, then there was probably people from that circle probably said, oh, that was really fun. I want to get these other three friends of mine. Did you see sort of a word of mouth flow, like someone from a circle would then create their own circle or talk to someone? Like talk about that uh, impact. Was that Im important? Yeah, absolutely. And we had we are so lucky because some of the uh, sketch noter, they even had blogs and wrote in, in blogs about it. Mm. So it was more than just talking to friends. So... I guess maybe we don't even know how many circles are already around because 
before COVID, they started with um, real place meetings. Mm. So now it's, of course, almost everything is digital and, and in virtual like Zoom calls and stuff. Mm. But um, back then it, it was also in, in, in real persons. In, in in person meeting, and uh, the blogs, the Twitter accounts, uh, Instagram, all the social media started more and more to use the hashtag learners and sketchnoting. Mm. So this made it for sure more accessible to a lot of people. And after we had our website, it was easier to access even the program. So mm. now more and more, it was mm. really it it's still growing. It it's I I feel it's like now just the start. Mm. So something I just thought about was on the website or in your leadership, it's open source, right? It's independent. You can sort of do it yourself. You don't have to report back in. But are are people who do circles encouraged to tell you that they have a circle, even if you don't you don't have to say who the membership is, but just to, for your benefit to know, like, hey, we just started a circle. Is that do, do people reach out to you on their own? Is there any kind of like request or anything like that so you know? Yeah, we, we try to en encourage the people because mm -hmm. we are still working on it. So mm -hmm. if we get a lot of feedback, we will for sure try to implement it again. Mm -hmm. Maybe do a next circle whenever it comes up, We it, it, it will emerge. So there are basically two things uh, you can do. You can write comments mm. uh, in uh, in the web on the website yeah? uh, and work it this way. Uh, or you can just uh, use the hashtags and shout, it out, shout us out. Yeah and get in touch with us. Hmm. Hmm. This is so exciting. It's fun to hear sort of how it came to be and how it's sort of got this momentum going. And I'm I'm hoping that it, just like with the German one, maybe it takes a little while because you just announced, right? But that uh, over the winter when there's not much to do and you want to hang out with your friends, like this would be an option for you when it's snowy outside and you know you don't want to go outside and do anything, you can start a circle and for 12 weeks have this connection and get to know people better. I think this is a really great opportunity. Yeah, and and that's something which is very important. This this circle is made in, or this, this guide is made in a way, it's not just for one-time use. Mm -hmm. You can iterate it as often as you want in different constellation with different people, with different objectives. So it's just a structure which helps you to uh, go through the 12 weeks but you can tweak it your way. You can, and even if you don't tweak it, just repeat it every year with new objectives, new people, maybe mm. to get to know each other. It's it's an amazing tool to improve your learning level on sketch notes. And and you mm. know, it's never never enough. You can always improve. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You always put an objective in there for your twelve week journey, mm -hmm. and you try to focus on a project. Mm -hmm. uh, take your take your abstract a goal and just make it try to make it into a project mm. yeah and uh, for example i did this when uh, when i did my sketch note circle back in november last year i just bought this ipad yeah? uh, and i spent so much time during the circle working on the ipad and just mastering this new tool mm. yeah maybe like just 50 hours just uh, spent there uh, and just feedbacking with the others. They were using the same app. Yeah? And uh, I went from, oh God, this is so stupid. And I, I am, I am uh, so slow. Yeah, because I just had this like uh, analog experience. Mm -hmm. uh, I was so good at uh, drawing for 30 years. I practiced it. I mm -hmm. went to the iPad. It was just, ah, oh. yeah. <laughs> for, for like four weeks. I hated it. Yeah, I was like, uh, ah, thousand euros. Just <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I can't work with it. And it helped me so much just uh, figuring it out with the others in a circle, mm. get their feedback. Um, and I think after five or six weeks, uh, I had a project in mind. I did a great sketch note for the first half of uh, the second half uh, of the circle, uh, put a lot of work in there. Mm. And uh, this is just one example of mm. things you can do in a, in a sketch noting circle. It sounds like it sort of holds you to some kind of a goal because like, had you not been in a circle after four weeks, maybe you would have just put down the iPad. You didn't have pressure from this accountability group. Uh, I gotta, I gotta talk to the circle this week. What am I gonna tell them? I can't tell them I gave up on this thing, or they might, you know, they might come and say, "Oh, give it another try, 
Carl, let's pick something yeah. else, right? And you have so many different dynamics in there. Mm -hmm. yeah? you have, maybe you have someone uh, who just started yeah? and uh, he looks at you and he says, okay, Carl, you're in sketchnoting for five years now and this is all you can do. Yeah? <laughs> you're just lazy. Yeah? Yeah? You need to work harder. Yeah? Okay, this is not what they told me. Yeah. This was <laughs> just imagine. I thinking about myself. Yeah. Just an imagined conversation. Yeah, yeah. Yeah? On the other hand, you maybe have uh, someone in a circle who ha has a lot of time right now yeah? uh, and looks uh, at the app you're using at a total different angle yeah. yeah, and just tells you two or three things that I would have never even tried yeah, mm -hmm. uh, at the end of a meeting uh, or the, the start of a meeting. And I was like, okay, <laughs> this is right, right now. This is so amazing. Mm -hmm. yeah, this made my day. Mm -hmm. yeah, uh, and uh, please show, show it to me again. Mm -hmm. yeah? I need mm -hmm. to figure it out how this works yeah, and incorporate in my workflow. Yeah, it, it's just a synergy, a learning mm. synergy. Mm. Yeah. And you can only have that in a group setting. Two questions for you. Number one, in a circle, does each individual have their own goal or does the group as a group set a goal or maybe there's both? So you definitely start with an individual okay. goal okay. and try to uh, think about something that's important for you and works for you. Um, and maybe you can have some meta goals mm -hmm. yeah uh, for example in this circle um, uh, i did last november uh, it was clear from the start that all participants wanted to work digitally mm. so this was the the, the subtitle learn or sketch noting use a digital tool okay yeah? but it doesn't have to be mm -hmm. and i think it's uh, much better if you just do what you want to do yeah, okay. and just start from there. There will be a lot of similarities, yeah, a lot of things you can share and talk about, even if you have your own individual project. Yeah. The more diverse the group is, the more you can learn from each other. So it's, it's the spread makes it. I mean, it's different dynamics. If you're very close and very similar in the field you work, or if you're very far apart and, and it brings just in, interdisciplinary stuff together so it, it's it's amazing no matter what group you're hitting hmm. it sounds like it's very flexible so from what i the way i perceive what you're saying is it could be all beginners that decide they're going to do a circle together and they follow strictly the structure just so they can get up to speed but then they could do it again and say like you said carl we all think the ipad is the way to go so everybody buy an ipad we're all going to use procreate and we're going to learn it together and then they would go back through it again and learn it um or you could break up and go into a group with different people and maybe you have individualized goals, but you just need a accountability group that you can share with and to give you ideas and encouragement and challenge, right? So maybe you're all doing really different things through the process so you can achieve something. So it sounds like even like a mix of like beginners and experienced people together has the benefit that the experienced person can provide some menta mentoring for the person who's new and the encouragement in a more accountability bound space that's safe and welcoming, right? Those are all really valuable things, I think. Am I perceiving right? <laughs> yeah, I think you, you showed now the one side, but it's also interesting for the expert to see somebody who is completely new to, to the field mm -hmm. to look from this angle one more time, because sometimes you get so deep into your perspective so that's like a little bit of help to zoom out and see, oh, well, I never looked at it like this. Mm -hmm. Everybody is profiting from each other. Hmm. Wow, this sounds really great. So guys, I think I have a pretty good sense of like what Learn OS sketchnoting is and sort of the many directions it can go. It sounds really exciting. Talk a little bit about now, normally we do tools and um, tips, but I think what I want to do is tips around best practices for a LearnOS circle, right? So you're listening, you're getting excited about doing a circle. Maybe you have people in mind, maybe you'll start hunting around. Let's assume that you're going to build a circle somehow and you're going to go for this, right? You've seen enough circles to know what's what are good things to do and maybe there's some cautionary tales, but like what are best practices Maybe each of you give me two tips for what you think would be a good way to begin a circle or run a circle or things to avoid. I'll leave it open to you guys. 
I go first. First thing, stop talking, start doing. Mm. Yeah. And you just need to talk about that you want to start a, a circle. Mm -hmm. And you can do it in social media. Uh, you can hit up the Sketchnote Army Slack mm -hmm. and you will find a Lernos group uh, mm -hmm. finder there. Yeah, just uh, type in when you want to start, type in your time zones uh, and your contacts. Um, and I think this will work. Yeah. Uh, and if you're not sure, hit up some friends, uh, some people you maybe um, want to get to know better or maybe old friends mm. that you uh, want to keep in touch with right now. Yeah. Um, and uh, just start uh, talking about it. And this will get you in a dynamic uh, to start a circle. Mm. Yeah, very often it's helpful to go via Twitter with the hashtag. Mm -hmm. I saw how circles um, came together. They didn't know each other at all before. And even, even on LinkedIn was a circle um, mm. coming together. They, they asked me if I can help. And, and it, it's interesting from, from you can... On social media, it's it's like never limitless how you can find people. No? Mm. So that's mm. that's this shouldn't be an obstacle. And and the important part is just to to keep going. Yeah, like Carl said. Mm. And and we had even some part. Sometimes you you couldn't you didn't really prepare your hour. A week was too stressful. Whatever. Mm -hmm. You just still show up and then you do the best you can. Mm -hmm even for this hour just and it was the, the nice part is everybody takes whatever is in this moment so mm. next time you you can do more it's flexible but stay mm. stay on this uh, routine and and try to keep this one hour a week mm. okay that's really good are there any um so maybe for the second one are there any things to avoid anything that you've seen like well people did this and it didn't work so well so avoid that is there anything like that that you could share we really recommend to stay maximum five people. Okay. So everybody has enough time to really show their work and get, get feedback, give feedback. If you expand it, it's nice, but then it takes much more time to give mm -hmm. everybody enough time. And then it's sometimes uh, this, the time limitation gets, gets in the way. Mm -hmm. So Four to five people are excellent. Even if one one time can't come or some, then you're still four. But over five, I wouldn't recommend. And and we got even bad feedback. Then you have like one and a half hours and it starts mm. to expand. Mm -hmm. It's not so good. And it's always important to be honest while goal setting. Mm. Uh, honest with yourself. Uh, so in this 12 weeks that are coming up, how much time do I really have? Yeah? Uh, is my heart into it? Yeah? Um, do I want to uh, do much more or just uh, just the hour? Yeah? Um, and just be honest with yourself. Yeah? Um, the others in the circle are not there uh, to, to judge you how productive you are in the circle. Yeah? They're just there to help you to give you feedback on what you did mm -hmm. not on what you didn't do yeah and maybe could have done if you had 20 hours mm -hmm. more and mm -hmm. just just be honest to yourself and this is something i learned in a circle yeah? because i always have this m crazy projects that i want to realize yeah and it's okay i just have one hour of preparation one hour in the circle yeah just do whatever possible is there it's almost like um, you're really holding the space open for whatever it is you want to do. And it's not about productivity or effectiveness necessarily, but to hold the space and the accountability, right? It seems like that combination of like holding a consistent space and then the accountability of your circle to help you through it, right? So that you don't just, like if you were just by yourself, you would just give up and not do it again. And who's going to yell at you or not yell at you, but I mean, who's going to cheer you, know, you up? To cheer you up or encourage you or right you just sort of on your own so that's the big advantage of this circle and it's i think you're right for a size perspective i've noticed that once you exceed about five in the workshops that i've run it's really hard to see everybody's thing and then you just have to have sampling and that's that wouldn't work for this kind of a structure i don't think very well because you want people to give you feedback mm -hmm. yeah and not some random things they say uh, and it's really not that uh, easy to uh, 
get what people are doing in this hour yeah, mm -hmm. and find something valuable that you can give them in their individual situation that they as a person, as a sketch noting human being uh, that they can uh, take along. And this will not be possible in big circles, mm -hmm. in big groups. Yeah. Uh, you just tell them, okay, la, 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 mm -hmm. do this. Surface, that, yeah, yeah. yeah. Surface. Hmm. Do you find, um, here's another question, in a circle, especially if it's people who don't, don't, don't know each other, does it take a little while for the group to, ge to gel, to come together and become a unit? Because I've seen that in work settings where I was put together with people I didn't know and it took, I don't know, three, maybe four weeks to really feel comfortable and trust them and, mm -hmm. you know, to where we really enjoy being together in a work setting, right? So I can imagine the same thing, especially in a circle where you know nobody else. What do you feel like is the normal time for a gelling to happen in a group like that? Um, of course, it depends sure. on the people. Yeah. yeah. But um, I think that the first half of the uh, of this sprint, so the first five to six weeks, you are much more guided uh, in the exercises. They are taking you along. So this time it's lettering, visual vocabulary, structure. Yeah? And of course you're feedbacking, but you're not getting a really down to the core of the feedback. Mm. This will happen in the second half, mm -hmm. yeah, where you show your projects, yeah, where you really get into your work. Yeah. Uh, and I think this is important that the big feedback things happen later in the circle mm. where, where you just found found your way together. Gotcha. Um, and I made um, I did some other LANO circles and I always found it amazing how fast it worked mm -hmm. uh, to get together with people you don't know just following this guidebook and following the exercises and doing something uh, having this shared experience it really works two three four weeks and uh, mm. uh, you you really feel connected yeah? in in the guide it's already implemented that you get together and maybe you don't know each other or not in this way so it's guiding you by making the first session about a sketchnote selfie where you can mm. introduce mm -hmm. each other to so it's it's even helping to get in the process of of mm. the group building circle building and to to get to know each other mm. um so all these aspects are included in the guide mm. And you did this uh, great sketch note, Rafaelina, about the feedback culture in the circle. Yeah, that you just—it's uh, maybe in the first or second week that you talk about the way you want to get feedback, mm. yeah, which is really important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so to be clear and precise with this. Mm. That's really important, I think. Do you find? So here's another question that just came to mind. Do you see circles like staying together? In other words, I could see this happening where. I build a circle. I really synchronize with these people. Six weeks in, like we're best buddies and we're giving good feedback. We know how things work. And you get to the end and you're like, it's over already? Let's do another one, right? And then you stay with that group because you've put in all the effort in the beginning to like sync. And now you trust these people, right? So now you can like come back again and maybe do some new goals, whatever they are, knowing that you, you've sort of worked out all the how it works stuff already. Is that is that the case? Yeah, we got even feedback that people get together again. So it's like a little bit like an addiction once you start it. <laughs> a good addiction. <laughs> and, and finally, Carl and, and, uh, and I and, and the other uh, team members, we did the same, just always with different objectives. But mm -hmm. I can imagine it will continue even with us. Maybe not directly mm -hmm. now, but we will always have something in common. And... And, and you grow together. It's like, uh, it, it's an um, experience you will never forget. And, mm. and as soon as something comes up, I think you will call your buddies again and say, well, mm -hmm. how about a new sprint? It's like a shared experience, of course. You know, yeah. something that you can't, you know, that you can't take away and has an impact. And the, th the other thing that comes to mind now is, if this is true and that these, ci these circles sort of build and then keep repeating, well, who knows what kind of interesting projects are going to come out of these circles, right? There's going to be one or many of these circles are going to collaborate and produce something new we can't imagine. Again, just like the Fab Four doing Hamburg, right? They didn't know that this would happen, and here it is. The thing that you've done, there are going to be things that you don't expect that are going to come from it 
that will be pretty exciting and you'll be pretty satisfied with, I think. It just sounds like the natural way this would flow to me. So we, yeah. we can't say that yet, but I mean, what I've just from what I've heard from the outside about how exciting this is for the German sketchnote community, which has a lot of energy already, is really encouraging. And I'm excited to see where it goes. And don't forget you're uh, allowed and able to remix all this stuff. Yeah, You can ta take it and do something else with it. It doesn't have to be a 12-week sprint. Mm. Yeah, It can be something else. Yeah, Just uh, think about it. Mm. Take a look at it and uh, make something amazing. Mm. Yeah, we got even some, some feedback like 12 weeks was not good because of uh, holidays, vacation, whatever. And they spread it to 20 weeks. They mm. had like two weeks in between a break. The, mm -hmm. the group decides where they want to go. So mm. the circle makes the rules how, how, how the collaboration and co-learning will, uh, will continue. Mm. But um, yeah. I think it would be really fascinating on the LearnOS uh, website for the future to see if these circles would report in about their success stories and tell these success stories because that would help someone new, I think, coming to it to see, like, how could it be... St and you could talk about, like, yeah, we took a break over the Christmas and New Year's holiday and then we started again, so we stretched it out or here's what we built from the thing we did. That would be pretty fascinating long-term mm -hmm. to see what case studies can you share of this being valuable. I'm sure there's going to be quite a few... Just a matter of getting people to tell you what they are. <laughs> so, this is pretty exciting. I, I'm so glad I had you guys on the show to talk about it and uh, to give people a little richer description, right? Like seeing the website is one thing, but hearing you talk about it and I can feel the passion that you have for it. It's pretty exciting. I hope people check it out. Yeah, we talked we talked about the process a lot. Mm -hmm, yeah, mm -hmm. um, and I hope we added enough details f uh, for your listeners to understand what is it what it's about mm -hmm. yeah um, and even if they don't they need to check it out mm -hmm. it's lernossketchnoting.org just take a look at it yeah? uh, and spend 15 minutes browsing through it right now and you'll definitely have an idea of what it's about and if it's something for you mm -hmm. I can't think of anything better to say than that, just to go check it out. There's links in the show notes, so you can check it out right now and uh, and see how you can apply it right away. So, um, Rafalina and Carl, how can people reach out to you and connect with you? It sounds like you're on Twitter and Instagram and other places. What are the best ways to reach out to you? Let's start with Rafalina. Yeah, so I'm, I'm on Twitter as DenkflowRR. You can find me there. I have mm -hmm. a homepage, um, a website, Denkflow, and I'm blogging on pockzero.com. Okay. So that's where you can find work of me and, or get together with me. Okay. And Carl? Best way to get in touch with me is my Twitter, mm -hmm. Carl C. Damke. Okay. And we'll definitely have show notes with links to those so you can find these guys and reach out and talk with them and ask any other questions you may have about a circle or to start a circle, even better. Thank you so much for being on the show. This is really fun. I really enjoyed hearing the story and the passion, and I'm really excited to see where this will go. I think this is going to be a, a really valuable episode for people, hopefully to spark them and start the second wave, right, in English as well as German. So thanks for being on the show, guys. Thank you for inviting us. Thanks for having us. Not a problem. And for those listening to the show, this will wrap another episode of the Sketch and Army podcast, and we'll talk to you next time. The Sketchnote Army podcast was created by me, Mike Rohde, and brought to you by Rohde Design Studios. It's produced and edited by Alec Polianis of Amp Creative Studios. The theme music was created by John Schiedemeyer. To support the creation of this show, I invite you to buy one of my books, The Sketchnote Handbook or The Sketchnote Workbook. You can find the books on Amazon or go to peachpit.com and use the code Rohde40 for 40% off. Please share this podcast with other visual thinking friends and be sure to leave a nice rating on iTunes or your favorite podcast listening app so others can find the show. 